Are you new to composting? Today I'm going to tell you 35 things that probably shouldn't be going in your compost bin. G'day there, I'm Dana from Pewaka Cavalli Homestead. Yesterday I was writing a blog post about things to not put in your compost bin and I actually thought that would be really helpful to have as a video as well to reach the people that would actually prefer to listen to stuff than read stuff. So I have got a list here of my 35 things I have come up with and the reasons why you don't want to put those things in your compost. Now composting is kind of touted as one of those really hard things to do and it's actually not that difficult and it's worth giving a go. Most things that are organic will break down over time. The reality is just to get the best, best, best compost there are some tricks and rules and ways of dealing with it that work better than others. So what you want to be doing is doing about a 50-50 um, greens to browns ratio. So your greens are your things that are really high in nitrogen. Uh, so manures, plants, coffee grinds, despite them being brown, are actually considered a green. Um, and then mix them in with uh, sort of dry stuff. So twigs, wood dry leaves, cardboard paper, straw, those sorts of things that are kind of dry and crunchy but are also made out of carbon. If you layer those together it means the air will be able to circulate and the right amount of nutrients will be there for the microbiota and the worms and all those fun things that are growing in the compost to be able to turn it into compost really really quickly. Now there is quite a marked difference between commercial compost and commercial composting facilities and what we can actually achieve in a small three feet by three feet one meter cube whatever uh, compost bin in your own backyard commercial compost heaps are significantly bigger they're turned really regularly and they are monitored really carefully with the um, carbon to nitrogen ratios and they're just it's just a whole nother science that we just don't get into at home and because of that there are some things that you can put in a commercial facility that you can't put in a home facility because we just don't get hot enough and definitely not for long enough we just don't have that same microbial activity that they do in a commercial one so one of those things that you can put in a commercial uh, compost heap but you just shouldn't put in a home one is seeds uh, weeds and plants that have got seeds on them particularly weed seeds our compost heaps just don't get hot enough to be able to cook those seeds to make them unable to germinate so what you'll usually find is if you put weeds with seed heads into your compost even if the seeds aren't fully developed yet there'll be enough oomph left in that plant for the seeds to continue to develop and when you go and spread your compost onto your garden it's going to grow nothing but those weeds that you were trying so desperately to get rid of in the first place this also applies to invasive weeds so those really invasive plants um, things that spring to mind are things like cooch um, quack grass twitch grass those sorts of rhizome based grasses particularly are really bad for it they will spend their time in the uh, compost like a bit of a spa. They'll enjoy hanging out in there, gather up some extra nutrients, and as soon as you put them out on the garden, every single one of those tiny little bit of root will regrow, and you'll just end up with that grass everywhere. So those sorts of invasive plants are much better off being either burnt, fed to animals, or just removed completely off-site. And the next two things kind of fit in that category as well um potatoes being one of them if you get all those tiny little green potatoes that you just don't want to eat and they're not worth peeling or they're just or they are green and they're not worth eating don't throw them in your compost heap you can cook them up um, if they're green potatoes don't feed them to anybody but you can cook them up and then put them in your compost but if you put them in even if you cut them into tiny little pieces, you put them in, they'll still grow and you're going to end up with potatoes everywhere. I can see a blackbird trying to get in my veggie garden. I'm going to see if I can see where she's getting in. So if I look distracted, that's what I'm looking at. Um, also with potatoes, potato peels. I've seen p potato plants grow from a thick potato peel. So um, maybe cook those up and feed them to your chickens rather than throwing them into your compost. And tomatoes is another one. Now, a little bit of tomato in the old compost tape, that's fine. I'm not saying don't put tomato scraps into the compost tape. But um, every single like seed that goes into the compost tape will probably regrow at some point. So if you're putting large amounts of tomato seeds that haven't been cooked into your compost tape, you're going to get large amounts of tomato plants growing all over the place. Um, and the other thing with tomato 
is that they're quite acidic so if you've got a whole lot of I don't know pulp left over from canning or something like that um, ideally you don't want to be putting those into the compost either because they can upset the pH balance and um, can upset the bacteria and stuff that are trying to do their work now dead animals dead animals if you have a big compost heap like Joel Sullivan I've seen him talk about it they have those massive compost heaps that they have that they put truck uh yeah truckloads of wood mulch into um they have been known to put an entire dead cow in there and cover it with more wood mulch and it just decomposes really really fast however in your tiny little vegetable garden compost heap putting a dead animal in there is just going to attract pests and uh, flies rodents all sorts of nasty things probably the feral dogs and cats will come and try and have a go things will come and try and scavenge them so if you have a dead animal you're much better off burying it in under a tree under at least a foot or two of dirt um put it in next to a fruiting tree if you know it hasn't been poisoned um and let the tree benefit from those nutrients but just keep them out of your compost heap and the next one is a little surprising to some people but i would not put manure from hay feed animals into my compost heap these days unfortunately there is a broadleaf spray called aminopyrolid which is used by a lot of farmers on their hay paddocks to get rid of the broadleaf the problem with that is that particular spray is not breaking down and it doesn't break down on the plant, it doesn't break down in the soil, it doesn't break down in the guts of the animals. So it's coming out fully active still in their manure. And so there have been instances of contaminated compost, like even commercial compost, where this has made it through and it's people just can't get things to grow in their vegetable garden. It's um, quite common for those heavy feeder plants that um, we put a lot of compost into that they're just not working um, and you end up with these funny little, the plants look like they've got spray drift but they haven't been anywhere near spray. Um, I've had this problem a couple of years running, uh, the neighbour sprayed his hay paddock, it obviously drifted onto our place, our goats ate the grass, I put the goat manure into our tunnel house and a whole lot of my tomatoes and peppers looked like they had spray drift but there's no way they could have got it in, within my tunnel house. Um, and so that's what we worked out what the problem was. So unless you know that the animal that you're getting the manure from has been fed organic hay, I wouldn't be sticking it into my compost heap. The only way to get that stuff to break down is to put it in its own pile and leave it for a couple of years and let the bacteria in the soil slowly work its way through it, unfortunately. The next thing on the list is oil. Anything oily, fatty, um, uh, even industrial oils, food oils, any of those sorts of things, don't put those in your compost heap. They upset the bugs, they block out the air, um, and they just don't break down well in the dirt. Um, commercial... Uh, Industrial oils need to be disposed of at the dump. I don't entirely know what they do with that, but they deal with that. Um, I do know that they used to mix them up and pour them on dirt roads. I, I don't know. We don't use a large amount of diesel or, or other industrial oils around here anyway. Um, and food oils, just don't put them in your compost heap. They are technically from plants. You can technically put them in the ground but they're not going to do well in your compost. Now dryer lint is one of those things that some people like, put your dryer lint in your compost. But the reality is, unless you're wearing completely natural fibre clothes, that dryer lint's going to have microplastics in it, which means they're not going to break down and they're going to end up in your soil. They will disappear from visual eyesight, but they will still be there in the soil. So I'll leave that up to you whether you want to decide, but it's something worth thinking about. Baby diapers, nappies, whatever you want to call them, these are not to go in the compost even if they are made of natural materials um, they can't go in the compost partly because they have the human waste factor and partly because the fibers and things in there even if they're compostable they need to be put through a, a compost facility and along with that same thing personal hygiene products feminine hygiene products that sort of thing if you're not using a menstrual cup i recommend you look into those it saves a lot of waste but if you have um, are using other things just don't put them in your compost 
especially if there's any kind of body fluids involved it's just not worth the risk with the bacterial contamination especially if you're going to be putting that compost onto your garden now along with the dryer lint comes cloth people will say you know i just rip your clothes up and you know your old clothes and throw them into your compost the reality is most of the dyes that we have in even our cotton clothing or our bamboo clothing a lot of the dyes are synthetic and they won't break down um, and they can affect the microbiota life within your compost as well. So unless you've got organic, plain, non-dyed wool or hemp or just natural fibres, other than that, I wouldn't go sticking them into your compost. Now there is a big movement towards um, compostable or biodegradable uh, plastics. And the problem is that anything that says biodegradable just means that if you put it outside, it will fall to pieces. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to turn into anything natural and it doesn't mean that it's going to compost and turn into dirt. So just be really aware that anything that says biodegradable doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, natural or that it's going to break down it uh, break down into something other than plastic a lot of biodegradable plastics just become microplastics and a lot of the compostable plastics you can find are not compostable yet in your own home garden when they say compostable most of them mean in a commercial facility if you try and compost it in your own compost heap you're just going to end up with a whole lot of plastic through your compost now there are a couple of types of trees that you want to keep out of your compost as well Walnuts produce a thing called juggalone, which um, for them it's great. It kills off all the plants that are growing around their roots, um, so they have no competition. But of course, if you're going to be putting it into a compost that you're then going to put around your plants, you don't want the juggalone still being there and affecting your plants. And the other one is gum, gum trees. Uh, we found that out the hard way. We had a whole lot of wood mulch. A whole big chunk of it was gum. I thought, oh, fantastic. That'll last for ages. I'll put it in my vegetable garden. And luckily I only put it on half of my vegetable garden, but that entire half grew nothing for an entire year. Everything was the same size seedling that I put in one year later and then it just went to seed. It was an absolute disaster. Don't put gum, gum mulch, gum leaves, gum nuts, anything from eucalyptus, keep those away from your garden. Cleaning chemicals, if you've got anything that you've, you know, washing windows or anything, if you're using a chemical out of a bottle don't tip it onto your compost heap it can kill off the bugs and stuff in there and will upset the balance in there you can't just throw stuff in there and hope nature will take its course and it will just get rid of stuff um, you really need to just be really careful what you're putting in there along with that don't try and add synthetic fertilizers to your compost compost is a brilliant source of bioavailable nutrients that nature just manages to break down and make available for plants throwing synthetic fertilizer in there won't make your compost any better in fact it can upset the balance so much that you can end up killing off a whole lot of the um, goodies in there and you'll end up with worse compost so don't throw your um, synthetic fertilizers in there thinking you're doing a good job Next on the list is large pieces of wood. If you have big chunks of wood, you're much better off looking at putting together like a hugel culture bed um, where you put all the wood in underneath and put some living active compost over the top and just letting it break down. A big chunk of wood in a home compost will not break down fast enough um, for it to be useful. So you're better off putting it somewhere else. I have a couple of chunks just sitting on the side of my herb garden. You see them there? just there and there are a couple of pieces of wood that um they couldn't fit through the log splitter and so we've just added them i know in theory i could bury them but um i've seen little um lizards living in underneath them and a lot of bugs and stuff live underneath them so they just hang out over there um and they'll just break down naturally if i put that in my compost it would it would do nothing not really nothing useful the other wood you don't want to put in your compost is anything that's been treated or treated sawdust. It will go in exactly the same as what it came out. I mean, they're treated specifically so that they don't break down. So don't put your treated timber into your compost and hope that nature will be magical and make it work. They're usually treated with really horrible chemicals that you don't want near your food as well. So you're best removing those from site completely. Coal ash is another interesting one. It used to be recommended that you put coal ash on onions and garlic um, 
to help them grow as a nutrient boost for them and coal ash is really high in sulfur and so are onions and garlic so I can see where that sort of came from and maybe it did used to work I'm not sure but we're a lot more aware of the other chemicals that are in coal now and it's not recommended that you put them on food crops. Adding paper to your compost is a really common thing um, plain brown paper, plain newspaper, cardboard, most newspapers these days use a soy wax um, in their printing ink so they're all perfectly safe to put in your compost. The thing that you can't put in is really shiny things especially the fronts of magazines and your dockets and receipts from um, any of those stores that use the heat printed dockets. Um, that's because they are all coated in plastic and they're just not going to break down. Speaking of plastic, another thing you can't put in is any kind of sticky tape. So the tape, packaging tape, box tape, anything that's shiny and plasticky, um, don't stick those in. They'll just come out the other end exactly the same as what you put in. Now back to the sulfur thing with the coal. Onions and garlic are natural, obviously, and a small amount of them in your compost is not going to cause a problem. The problem will come if you put a huge amount of um, onion or garlic or any of those al allium, is that how you say it? Allium fan family um, plants in there. You don't want to um, put those in there. The high levels of sulfur will upset the pH balance. So if you do have lots to put in, make sure you're spreading them out well amongst the compost heap and adding in plenty of other items, not just trying to compost like onions and straw or something like that. It's just not going to work well. Now the next few things that I have on my list are food items that in small volumes, they're usually fine um, in your compost heap, but if you're going to be starting adding sort of a decent chunk of them in there, it um, becomes a bit of a problem. Rice being one of them, and it's kind of a bit surprising, I know, but rice harbors quite a lot of bacteria. Uh, I think because it's just a plain starch, that um, a lot of bacteria can live on there and... Um, they're not the good bacteria, they're ones that can upset the balance of the compost. And if you're going to be putting the compost onto your vegetables, you want to avoid putting huge amounts of rice. You're much better off um, splitting that up and mixing it through um, something like your chicken feed and just giving it over a few days and letting the chickens process it through their gut instead. Eggs, if you have found, as many of us have over the years, a big nest of a whole lot of eggs and a bunch of them are rotten, don't stick them into your compost. One, the shells don't break down very well when they're whole. And two, they're going to attract a lot of pests. If you have got a whole lot of excess eggs, you can bury them under things like tomatoes that like the extra nutrients and the extra calcium. Um, or even just in your vegetable garden, if you dig a trench and put your, t um, put your spare eggs right down on the bottom, they'll break down slowly and add the nutrients to the soil without upsetting your compost or worse, surviving the composting process and you popping it with a fork later. Wow. Fish guts, fish heads, fish scraps are another thing. They'll just attract pests. They are highly nutrient. They're really great underneath plants. But if you put them in your compost heap, you are asking for one, stink, two, flies, and three, lots of pests. So nothing brings feral cats to your yard faster than some fish heads tossed in the top of the compost heap. So if you have got those, bury them in under something that's going to benefit from those extra nutrients. Berry plants, um, fruiting trees, tomatoes, anything that loves the extra boost of nutrients. And along with fish goes meat scraps. Same problem really, um, exact same problem really. Meat and fish um, are safe to feed to chickens. If you boil them up, you can feed them to pigs. Um, avoid giving them the fish bones because they'll choke on them. But... Um, the actual meat itself, you can boil those up and feed them to the pigs or you can feed them to the chickens and that's a really good way of using it or otherwise bury it, especially if it's something that you're not entirely sure how it died um, and you don't want to feed that meat to your animals, get it buried, get it down. Dairy is another one that you don't want to go sticking in your compost heap for, again, same, same reasons, um, the smell, the flies, the, um, the pests. Uh, you can ferment dairy and feed it to either pigs or chickens quite happily. Don't stick them in your compost. And bread is another surprising one. Now the odd kids crusts into your bread will be fine. But when you start adding loaves and loaves of bread, don't like um, if you're getting scraps from a bakery or what have you. 
too much bread in a compost heap will upset the bacterial balance, it will upset the yeast balance in there and it won't break down well and it can change the pH of the overall product as well. Now kind of in the same vein but a little different is the little stickers that are stuck all over our fruit and vegetables. Unfortunately for whatever reason they decide to make those out of plastic instead of paper so they're not biodegradable, they won't break down in your compost and then you're just going to have chunks of plastic left in there. Tea leaves and coffee grinds are brilliant additions to the green side of your compost heap. Unfortunately most tea bags and coffee filters contain synthetic fibres and they're not so great to stick in the compost. So if you can look for reusable coffee filters and reusable tea bags otherwise look for ones that are either just plain paper or plain cotton. Citrus is another one of those things obviously we know that citrus is quite acidic and if we start putting too too much of it in a compost pile it's going to really upset the balance. Um, the other thing is citrus peels themselves don't break down particularly well especially if they're in big chunks so if you're going to add some citrus to your compost by all means do it make sure you cut them up nice and small and just be aware that a big hunk especially of citrus pulp won't break down very well in the middle of your compost heap they need to be spread out and um, mixed in well with plenty of brown material and lots of other types of greens so that the acidity doesn't affect things too much. Now the next two things are poop. So carnival poop, so anything uh, dogs and cats being the two main common ones, um, keep that out of your vegetable garden. They can be commercially composted, you can bury them, but the they also harbour some really nasty um, germs, toxoplasmosis being one of them. You don't want that in your compost heap, it won't break down in your compost heap and it can survive and end up on your vegetables. So for health and safety reasons, keep the cat and dog poop out of your vegetable garden. And if you have a composting toilet, I'm sure you're quite aware of how to compost that safely. That's the other thing you want to be keeping out of your compost heap is human waste because the bugs and bacteria that we have in our guts can amplify in a nice warm moist composty environment and can end up infecting and affecting our food crops so um, a human a humanure or however you say it can be safely used after a couple years of really well composting um, usually people toss it on the orchard rather than putting it into the actual vegetable garden if you have plants um, that have been treated with herbicides or pesticides or fungicides you want to avoid getting those into your compost heap because of course your compost heap is predominantly made up, it, it survives and it thrives and it's wonderful because of the bugs and the insects and the fungi and all those sorts of things that are in there. So the last thing you want to be doing is putting in contaminated um, plants that are going to kill those things off because then your compost heap will just become a sludgy mess instead of a healthy thriving environment. And the very last thing I have on my list is lawn clippings. Now you can put some lawn clippings into your compost and as long as they're spread out in a layer that's no thicker than an inch and layered well with plenty of brown material um, then it will probably be fine. As l also as long as they haven't been sprayed with those aforementioned herbicides, pesticides, fungicides um, or synthetic fertilizers. You want to keep those things out of your compost heap. You can use them as a mulch around other plants but they're probably not best in your compost pile itself. Now I have just realized how long this video is. I will try and edit it down so it's not quite so long and rambly. Um, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel. We bring you videos twice a week on growing and preserving your own food. We'll see you in the next one.